Mala. Um, so welcome to today's webinar. Basically, this is an introduction in which we will briefly describe the building, the, the masters in building services of the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Malta. It started a couple of years ago in 2017, and it's already had two cohorts of students in it. In fact, the second cohort right now are soon going to be in their final year, which will consist of them doing a dissertation. Um, the webinar, first of all, will start by a talk from engineer Charles Kushkiri, who is the founder of Camilleri and Kushkiri Consulting Engineers. And he is also a member of the industry advisory uh, board of our masters in building services. Um, he's got a lot of experience in the field, so I'm, I'm sure that his talk will be very, very relevant to what we'll be discussing today. Following this, then we will have a brief discussion by various lecturers on the course itself, on the modules of the course, and even on certain dissertations or how they're carried out. Um, and in the end, we will allow some time for your questions, okay? The idea of the webinar is for it to be as short as possible so that we can give you a brief overview of the masters. And eventually this recording will be made available um, for other prospective students who want to know a little bit more about the, the degree. So it's 17.34 now. Um, I think I can ask engineer Charles Kushkiri to start um, his talk, which I believe you should be seeing already on your screen. Can everyone confirm that uh, you're seeing my screen, please? I am. Yes, yes. Uh, please mute yourselves, by the way, so yes. that only the speaker will, will be heard, if you don't mind. Uh, thanks, Cyril, for inviting me to, uh, to open this, this uh, webinar. It's my pleasure to assist the Faculty of Engineering in, uh, in the activities that, that they hold, including this, uh, this Master's in Building Services, uh, which I think is very relevant to, to what is happening today. Uh, I will give a brief introduction of myself and of uh, Kamil and Kushkiri. I have been practicing in building services in, in, for more than 40 years. In fact, Kamil and Kushkiri uh, had its uh, 40th anniversary uh, two years back. Um, and I have been an, an employer of engineers and later of building services engineers um, for over 30 years. Unfortunately, when, when I started off, there was no master's, not even a, an undergraduate course in building services. So, so the training from being an electrical engineer to being a building services engineer, we had to do it the hard way through attendance to seminars mostly organized by, by uh, suppliers and manufacturers of equipment used in, in, in building services. You're still seeing the first slide, you know? Yes, the first slide, everything. Okay. Um, the the uh, Kamel Tushkiri, uh, as I said, was formed in 1979. Uh, today we are a team of 20 persons, including uh, a number of, 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 of engineers. Uh, and uh, we, we, uh, we handle a number of, of projects, both locally and internationally. Um, uh, wh why do I believe in, in having a, a master's in building services? Um, in building services, you, you, uh, you can go in different directions, uh, either as a consultant or in contracting or into one of the regulatory authorities. And in, in all cases, you have to be fully aware of the requirements of, of this field of, of, of engineering. Um, 
um, uh, in, 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 in building services, we, uh, we uh, collaborate with other professions uh, like architects, structural engineers, interior designers. Um, and and uh, I like uh, to, to say that while architects and structural engineers design the building, uh, building services engineers make it work. Without, without our input, the building will be, will be dead. Uh, it, it, will, it won't work. So, so our work is very important as part of the fully uh, functionality of the full functionality of, of, of the building. Building services is a specialization in, in engineering and, and you cannot be a building services engineer without being first uh, an engineer. Um, and, the, and the better the engineer you are, the better the building services engineer you can, you can become. In, in, in normally in the first degree, which in Malta uh, from, the, from the Faculty of Engineering, you either, you can either get a degree in electrical engineering or a degree in mechanical engineering. In, in, in the first degree, and I strongly believe that the first degree is very, very important, you, you, you get to know the fundamental uh, principles uh, in engineering. And without understanding these, ba these, these basic principles, uh, you cannot really practice any field of engineering, but uh, even more so uh, in, in building services. So when you, uh, when you have your principles right, then in building services, you learn how, how to, to apply them in the case of, 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 of buildings. Why, why I believe that an MSS in building services is, is, is important because first of all, it will, it will revise and reinforce the fundamentals of engineering that, that the, the attendees would have learned in, in, their, in their first degree. Uh, but also to cover subjects which are never covered uh, as part of the electrical mechanical uh, uh, degrees that, that one would have followed as, as, a first, as a first degree. While the first degree normally uh, limits you to either electrical or mechanical, to, to, be, to become a good building services engineer, you have to start to understand and interest yourself in both the electrical and mechanical engineering fields, because it's very difficult uh, not to understand the one or the other, to be able to, to, to practice uh, well in, in, in building services. I'm not saying that in building services, there aren't electrical engineers and mechanical engineers. That's not the case, but in most cases, you have to be aware of the requirements of the electrical installations or mechanical installations to be able to design your own part to contribute to, the, to the, your own part of, of, of the project. In, 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 in the master's degree in building services, you, you are introduced to specialized topics uh, that, that you will never have covered in, in your first degree, for example, lifts, fire safety, acoustics, uh, renewable energy, and, 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 and some others. And, and these are all very important to, for you to practice. For, for those who are attending today and they are already practicing in building services, and I'm sure there are a few, uh, first of all, you are given the opportunity to see the, the, the academic side of, of the subject that you are practicing. Unfortunately, um, some of the building services engineers that I come across um, they do things by what I call the rule of thumb rather than by solid um, uh, scientific uh, background. And this is why uh, the, the, the course uh, that, that uh, we're introducing today is very important because it will give you the theoretical background behind the applications that you normally use every day. Like I said, I come across uh, on a number of occasions where some of the building services engineers that, that we meet on projects do not really understand, do not fully understand uh, what they do and why they do it. 
uh, unfortunately, they they use uh, textbook solutions, which most of the time they are not applicable to the project that they are dealing with. Very important in all engineering, but also in, in building services, is that the uh, the technologies that we use are always changing from day to, to, to the following. And so uh, you have to keep abreast of, of the emerging uh, technologies. And also very important in building services is the uh, legislation that, that uh, affects the, the requirements for the operation of the building. A very typical case is, is the, the experience we had for these last, uh, these last months with, with the epidemic. That, that ventilation rates, for example, in buildings, they had to be adjusted to meet uh, the new situation uh, of, of, of having um, proper ventilated buildings, not to expose the, the, the users to, to, uh, to, to uh, situations like we have experienced during the list, these last years. So in building services, you learn how to, how to apply the technologies that, that you need to apply. You also benefit, and I think this is very important, that you benefit from the experience of other engineers. Um, uh, and uh, another very important aspect of building services is designing for uh, the high energy efficiency. Uh, obviously, energy efficiency is becoming more and more important. We have targets, there are legal targets that we have to meet. And so you have to be aware of these, of these targets and your obligations to contribute towards these targets. In building services, those who go to, to consultancy, uh, we normally refer to our job as doing consultancy at design. But consultancy, you cannot do design without the, the consultancy part. Um, uh, consultancy means, and this is, it does not happen very, very in all, in all cases, that we need to understand what the client needs from, from the project that he is entrusting us with. And, most, and we have to design to meet those needs and to meet those targets that our client have put forward before us. Um, we and not 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 only that, but we need to understand that there are a number of solutions, and we can, we are able to evaluate their their pros and cons, and then and then after after discussing these pros and cons with 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 our client, then then we can uh, proceed with the with the with the design. So what are the other advantages of, of doing this course? You, 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 you improve communication. Engineering, especially in building services, it's all about communication. You need, you need to communicate well with, with other engineers in your team or, with, or outside your team, with the architects, interior designers, with, with drafting people, quantity surveying uh, colleagues. Uh, and and uh, obviously what, what I already indicated with clients and eventually with contractors who will execute the, the, the project. We must be able to advise client and explain possible solutions. And you know that, that clients are not always very technical. So we need to be able to communicate with our clients and sometimes in non very technical terms. So we need to, to calm down it in our communication with clients in a way that, that we can uh, we can explain to them uh, what, what they are going to get finally in, in their project. We need also to explain how we arrived to the solution that we are proposing and on what, on what engineering principles this, this uh, advice is being, is being, is being made. You, you need to be able to communicate with, with, the, with the drafting staff, with, with your colleagues that do the drafting, because they have to, to put uh, your, your well-taught solutions on, on, on a document that is then interpreted and read and used to, to, to carry out the project. 
So communication, again, is, is very important uh, with your own staff and that of the contractor who is then uh, entrusted to, to carry out the project. Very important that, that um, apart from doing a, a good design, you are able to follow it up during, during execution. Although now, nowadays, most of the contractors have their own building services engineers, and this helps a lot because obviously, then we have a responsible uh, person that can interpret of what we have, what we have designed. But in some cases, uh, and in what that happens more frequent than, than other places, we have small contractors that do not employ a building services engineer. And so we have to communicate direct with whoever is doing the work. Another thing that, that I find a lot in, 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 uh, in work that I come across, that a lot of engineers, they, they over-design their, their, uh, their solutions. And this is a very, a very, very uh, big problem because when you over-design, apart from increasing what, what, I, what I call unjustified costs, it reduces performance and lower the efficiency. You start understanding uh, quantity surveying and how through through uh, the the, uh, the compiling of a bill, uh, bill of law of quantities, you can describe the the contents of the works that that contractors need to do apart from from the drawings that uh, you would you would uh, attach to these uh, BOQs. Important as well is that um, you guide your client uh, on what will be both the capital cost of his project and the operational cost. Again, I, I, I find a lot of situations where, where other engineers have indicated a cost uh, to their clients and then they find out that the, uh, the cost of, of their designs is one and a half times or two times what, what they have predicted. And this, this puts the project in, in, in jeopardy and it creates a lot of, of, of problems to, to everyone involved. Most important to understand is that uh, in, in building services, you don't work as, 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 as a single engineer, but you work in a team. And, and uh, giving your contribution to the team will will uh, secure that that the project is done to the highest level possible we as employers of of of, of building services engineer we need uh, a number of properly educated and properly trained building services engineers who have uh, a real insight into into what 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 they're doing Like I said before, safety regulations and requirements are continuously being updated uh, and building services engineers need to be fully up to date with, with, with the legislation as this keeps, keeps changing and updating itself. I would like to conclude to, uh, by saying that the, the course in, in building services should not be an end in itself but uh, as an, another way of uh, continued professional development, which should, which should happen even after you finish your, your, your degree and, and, and get your certificate. Keeping abreast of, of uh, developments in technology is the fundamental, is very fundamental to keeping yourself relevant uh, in the field. And a very important, a very important aspect, especially in building services, that uh, every one of us needs to understand that ethical behavior is fundamental when dealing with clients and your colleagues. I, 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 I come across too many instances where engineers between themselves and between them and, and their clients, there's a lot of unethical behavior involved and this is, this gives a very better reputation to our to our profession. So I think ethical behavior is fundamental uh, in 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 in, uh, in good practice as, as a building services engineer. Uh, what I can say is these last years the demand for good building services engineers have been 
uh, has been very good. And, and if you can produce and you can build a reputation for yourself as being a very good services engineer, then your career prospects are, 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 are uh, very, very, uh, very, very well. And, and you can, you can uh, achieve a very high level in your, in your career. Just, just to show you the, the, how, how we work as a team. This is my, my team that, 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 uh, you know, that has been now together for a number of years. And, uh, you know, the, I'm very pleased that, that not only the, the individual contributions, but also the, that, that we can work as one team. And, and I, and I hope that you will, after, after finishing your course, be able to, to work in in uh, in a similar team and give your contribution uh, to to the projects that that you will be doing. Uh, I I I uh, I hope that I have given you a good a good background to uh, to to this course and and good reasons why you should follow it and and uh, I hope that you you will take up this this challenge and and uh, wish you all the very best. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Charles, for, for that talk and for sharing your experience um, in, in this area of engineering with us. Um, so the next part of the webinar will be basically an explanation on the Building Services program itself. Charles will remain with us, if I'm not mistaken. So if in, you'd like to ask him some questions, maybe on his experience as well, um, please do it after we will um, uh, discuss the degree with you. I will leave this in the hands of Professor Robert Girlando, Dr. Simon Borch, Dr. John Lee Curry, and Engineer John Caruana, who are all lecturers within the Masters in Building Services. So now I will present myself, the presentation. Okay. Wait a minute, managed to vanish. I think you're all seeing your faces right now. Okay, there you are. <laughs> okay, <coughs> so it's okay, everybody's seeing this? Yes, we're seeing it, uh, Cyril. Okay. Yes, sir, thank you. So if you, um, so I think Robert will start, right? Yes, I'm starting. And, mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, good, uh, good evening. Sort of my intervention here is simply to give you an overview of uh, the course structure mainly and something about the dissertation and later about the management, a uh, couple of management units we have uh, in the course in which I'm involved. All right, so the course is a part-time evening course. It's mainly taught, um, master's uh, MSCs in engineering, we have two types. One is the research, mainly research, and then this mainly taught. This is mainly taught. And you'll see now very clearly why. It's of 90 ECTSs. That's um, the uh, study units, uh, how we measure study units. It's over three years. And so every, obviously every year is 30 ECTS. And it's from October to June, over three years, okay, in the evening. Each of the first two years consists of six study units of five ECTSs. And uh, you will have an opportunity later on from my colleagues who will give you an indication what these study units consist of. Very important um, for people who want to join the course is what are our entry requirements. It's basically a BEng honors course, the degree that we do at the University of Malta, but obviously any other uh, similar undergraduate degree with at least second class um, honors. Either, uh, even lower is, is good enough. We also consider applicants with other relevant qualification that the experience may be considered, but uh, that we will then have to go through uh, an interview procedure or what have you. Obviously we want to make sure that whoever starts the course actually finishes and doesn't get stuck in the middle because he doesn't have the enough academic background. To apply is very easy. You go online at that um, um, uh, on that website of the University of Malta, and they'll tell you exactly what you have to do to apply. The deadline is 22nd of July 2020, 
21, which is my wedding anniversary, but that's irrelevant, and at two o'clock, all right? So if you want to join, you have up to the 21st of, 22nd of July. Besides uh, contributions from the departments in the Faculty of Engineering, we also have contributions from the Faculty of Built Environment and also the Institute for Sustainable Energy. I thought it would be important to put down what, they, what it's going to cost you. Obviously, it costs you going to cost you a lot of time, which you need to dedicate to it. But it will also there is also a cost of uh, one thousand two hundred fifty euros per year, payable obviously to the university. But um, the good news is that there are also a couple of scholarships available from Get Qualified from the uh, Department of Education and Endeavor from uh, the Malta Enterprise. Can I have the next slide, Cyril, please? So the course structure, as I said, is three years. Years one and two are uh, dedicated to study units. So each semester, um, so we have two semesters in every year, and each semester has three study units of five ECTSs. So at the end of the year, you get your 30 ECTSs. One semester is 14 weeks. So that gives you an idea of how long um, the, the semester is. And the lectures take place in the evening. We, get, we end up with two lectures of three hours each per week. So your, the three study units are staggered. Um, and um, from five o'clock to eight o'clock in the evening. The number of lecture hours per study unit, we get nine lectures of three hours, so it's 27 hours. And that gives you an idea of um, how much time you have to put into it in terms of lectures. Obviously, then you need to put in time for um, private study. Just to give an idea how much time, um, we calculate that one ECTS is, ECTS is equivalent to 25 hours of um, lectures plus study units. So a study unit is typically 125 hours of of everything. Obviously, some study units you will require to put much more, and some others might be much easier to go through. Um, <laughs> year three, on the other hand, <laughs> is dedicated totally to the dissertation, and I will be saying a few words about that uh, in a minute. All right. So, in fact, can I have the next slide? Okay, so now um, my colleagues will take over. Okay, so I take it I can actually proceed to the um, what I refer to them as the mechanical oriented study units. Yes, um, okay, so um, I purposely actually signal them as the mechanical oriented rather than the mechanical study units because I think that it, it's more than just the mechanical the mechanical part. So basically, in your first year, um, what you'd be doing is, of course, an introduction for the energy conversion processes and thermofluid systems. That is basically for all of those who have a mechanical engineering background as their undergraduate. It's fairly fairly a revision of what they have what they have done for those of course who are of an electrical nature there will be some um, some general upkeep to um, general engineering practices in relation to to the mechanical aspect that is followed mostly by then fundamentals engineering science of HVAC systems, which basically covers aspects of heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. And later on in, in the second year, HVAC technologies, um, which is basically the application of the engineering theory to real um, to the real systems. However, I'm not focusing so much on those as to the reason why I've mentioned mechanical oriented study units. So the first part why I mentioned mechanical oriented is that of course, apart from the aspects which we mostly associate uh, mechanical engineering and the building services that of course HVAC systems and um, there's also aspects like fire um, specifically uh, fire and public health engineering whereby we go into fire safety engineering and water resources becoming um, given the type of buildings um, which we are seeing nowadays it's becoming more and more important that we um, interact, especially in relation to, to fire safety. It's becoming more and more important. There's the, the false idea that buildings in Malta do not, do not catch fire or, not, or are possibly never a fire hazard when it's not really the case. And we think that this actually should be given uh, due importance 
in, in this course. I personally don't come from the Faculty for Engineering. Some of you might know me from the Faculty for the Built Environment. I actually have been the last nine years mostly involved with architects and, and civil and structural engineers. So I, I actually teach the last, um, the last study unit, which is Integrated Design for Services and Buildings, which basically ties up um, uh, what uh, Engineer Kushkiro was, men was mentioning before. That is the importance not of, of just knowing how the equipment actually actually works, but rather how, in, how first of all, it interacts with the building that is of primary, that is of primary importance, how it, how it interacts with the building itself, what are the requirements of the building. There's a completely different scenario, whether you have an office building, whether you have a performance space, a theater, etc., etc. but also aspects in relation to um, uh, engineering management with Professor Gerlandwin also mentioning later on, and the whole idea of actually interacting with other professions, being them structural engineers, architects, especially uh, from what I noticed, that is one, um, one major problem which uh, building service engineers from one side and the architects and structural engineers on the other often encountered. It is the idea that no one really knows what's going on on the other side of the field. So with this part specific um, study unit, I, we try, I try together with my colleagues to tie up the, those loose ends, okay? Um, not just focusing on the equipment itself, but rather the holistic approach to building services and to building services and buildings and basically go through the, the various aspects, vertical movement, hot and cold water supply, drainage, renewables in buildings, not just the traditional ones, but also specifically integrated in buildings. As per, and of course, um, analysis of real case studies. Um, I think from my side, uh, then I'll be open to questions later on and I leave to my colleagues for the, for the subsequent slides. Thank you, Simon, for your input um i will be discussing a little bit about the electrical oriented study unit basically there are three which will be covered in year one the first module is in semester one and the other two are in semester two of the first year the first module is like an introduction to basic principles of fundamental electrical engineering for those that have already electrical engineering background, it will be serve you as a revision with some top-ups. However, for those mechanical uh, engineers uh, following the course, it will be something new, okay? And, and we'll build upon this. Some topics that uh, will be dealt within this module will basic principle of three-phase systems like complex impedance, different types of power, balanced and unbalanced conditions of three-phase three systems, power sector. Then we look into distribution systems, like we start off from the generator, uh, from the generation side of, of energy, the transmission and distribution of energy. We look into the different types of equipment along the transmission process, like for example, cables, switch gear. Uh, we look also at <clears throat> fault level calculations, proper earthing, how to earth your system, and of course, the network code. We, not, we need to design our systems according to the standards, as the previous speaker said before, and also the network code. Then another topic is the load assessment. You need to um, develop the skill, how to assess the load, how to classify, how to envisage the maximum demand that you will have in a building, and also to apply diversity on your load. Uh, other topics that uh, you will be exposed to are electrical machines, starting of electrical machines, application of electrical machines, power electronic devices. As you know, uh, today is all, all, everything is inverter control, so you need to know about these power electronic devices, these, how, how they are controlled and the repercussions of having inverters. Then we'll move on to the last, next topic, which is based on power quality. Um, building services engineers, uh, their work does not stop with the design, but they need also to carry on uh, even troubleshoot. And uh, those of you who will uh, do this course and practice the building services engineering area, um, they will surely encounter with power quality issues. So uh, with this uh, introduction 
to power quality, you will be able to understand this problem and how to mitigate these, these problems. Also, finally, the last topic in this module would be looking at alternative supplies, backup supplies, such as Genesis, UPS in cases of data centers, for example, renewable energy systems, PHPs, and also the new topic, the, 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 the topic of the day is storage. Okay, so we'll move on to the next uh, module. It's mostly related to the automation side of the building services, where you will start with a, uh, some basic theory of instrumentation, how you will measure, okay, uh, quantities from a building, how to control, and of course, some com communications. Looking a little bit deeper in the module uh, about the topics, so we'll review some measurement and instrumentation technologies used in the building management system, how one can control HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system, um, how to uh, connect it with the BMS, the architecture, the physical architecture, the hardware that needs to be uh, uh, used, and also the standards that you need to abide with. Um, an interesting uh, part of this module is the introduction to Internet of Things, the IoT technology, and how these uh, can be integrated also in the building management system. And uh, some interesting uh, um, examples of case studies and real-time, real-life examples will be presented in this module. Um, some also some uh, some information regarding how what to do with real time data and calculations, visuals and analytics will also be will be uh, uh, carried out. Finally, the the last topic is the is the core of the electrical building services. Um, we'll start off in this topic with regulations. It's very very important regulations and technology and design calculations. Um, we'll, we'll look into the how to size different parts of an electrical installation, such as cables, bus bars, which gear sizing, the form of segregation of switch gear. We'll do also lighting design, okay, like different lighting schemes, so what to, how, how to design a proper lighting, what level of uh, uh, illumination that you need to achieve on certain workspaces. Um, lightning protection, the protection from lightning uh, strikes, how to protect your building. We'll look at the method, the mesh, the, the protection angle, and the, 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 the sphere method. Also, the surge protection, how we'll, we'll split up the, the, the premises into lightning protection zones, and we uh, apply different surge protection for every zone. And last but not least, we'll look into the inspection, testing, and certification. As a building services engineer, um, you need to, one, make sure that you, the system that you installed, or the, that you designed has been installed correctly and up to spec. You need to inspect, therefore, you need to test. And finally, you, you need to put on your signature on the certification. So that's very, a very important aspect. Um, from my side, um, I, I contribute in two modules. Uh, the first one, the introduction, the basic principles on power quality, basically. And on the last topic, um, I look at lightning design, surge protection, and their thing. So I will, uh, I will be, I mean, if you have any questions, I will be here till the end. So please put forward any concerns or, or, or clarifications that you might have. Thanks. Okay, no, uh, Robert. Okay, it seems it's my turn again. So, uh, basically, <coughs> um, I'll introduce these two management uh, units we have: engineering management one and engineering management two. Although they're one and two, they don't they're totally independent of each other. In engineering management one, in which I coordinate and and and, and I do some teaching in it, we tackle the ethical issues, which as um, engineer Kushkiri pointed out are extremely important. Tendering and contracting, 
Uh, we also do some economic analysis of projects and we do project management, which also involves a, uh, a project, um, an assignment on, on, in project management. Um, project management at the moment is taught by Dr. Z uh, Martin Zamid, but he'll be taking over the whole unit um, at the end of this year. Um, uh, what I can say is that uh, I use a lot the uh, FIDIC uh, books for, uh, for some of these uh, lectures. FIDIC is the International Federation of uh, Consulting Engineers. Um, as far as tendering and con tendering, I think I can claim to have been on both sides of, of, of the uh, fence. Um, so I have, and obviously, apart from using the FIDIC books, I tendering has to be very much on the local side. So uh, I do look at uh, government procurement rules and, and that sort of thing. In engineering management too, we treat health and safety issues of course are extremely important and risk management and 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 relevant environmental and other regulations um, and that's covered if i'm not mistaken by dr simon mitzi um can i have the next slide i think i should be doing the cyril yes so the dissertation i have a slide about the dissertation um, it's, uh, we call it a project. It's, uh, as I said before, in the third year, 30 ECTSs. Length of dissertation is 20,000 words. Um, this is obviously something, a, a project that has to be done part-time evening. It's uh, 30 ECTSs is what we normally do full-time in one semester. You will be having two semesters, but we understand that you're doing this while you're actually working um, because it's a part-time course. And uh, I put down roughly the procedure, how, how things uh, work, that, um, oh, okay, sorry, um, <laughs> that's uh, the next, uh, next point. Um, what we're adding this year is that in February of March, we will ask students to make a presentation of the work carried out today. That's February, March of the third year. Um, and this is basically a check to make sure that students have actually started the project and have already proceeded quite a, a while. There is the danger when you are doing a part-time degree that uh, work takes over and does not allow you to do the work for your, uh, for your, for your thesis. All right, the submission date is the end of May of the third year. Now, how do you choose your projects? In the period between January and March of the second year, um, uh, we assign the projects and supervisors to, to, to the students. Uh, basically, at the beginning of the process, a list of supervisors and their area of interest is circulated to students. Students then are invited to submit a project title and a proposal, and then we meet as a board of studies and assign supervisors to the students according to the project title and proposal that they will have submitted. Um, of course, we're there to help students. What's happened? The presentation is gone. Um, obviously, we're there to help students in um, helping them to choose their project projects and obviously later helping them along the supervisor, but um, not only the supervisor will help in your project, but any other lecturer whom you might want to consult. Um, I think I am I am done. So uh, um, back to you, Cyril. So um, yes, um, just get out of PowerPoint. Uh, actually, I can stop sharing. Can stop sharing. Okay. Um, so now we have got a couple of well, a couple of minutes. I mean, it's basically up to us. Um, those who have got some questions, it's the time for you to ask. I think there are no more questions, um, Cyril, so we can... Yes, so once again, thank you to all the people who have um, participated in, in the knowledge about this degree. And thank you to your participants as well for um, coming. It shows that there is a large interest in building services, um, which is very healthy, I think. As, as Engineer Koshki said, it's a very important area of engineering so that... Um, mechanical, electrical, and even civil engineers get together in the proper way. 
and they need to be knowledgeable in all the technologies so as to produce good, reliable projects and efficient as well. Um, if you ever need anything, uh, questions, please feel free to contact us through the website of university. Over there, you can get our individual emails as well. So um, I think for today, we'll close. Hope to see some of your faces in the next cohort of students. If you need anything, just ask. We are always available. So I'm going to stop recording, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you and good day.